Hey my beautiful souls, welcome back to Refining with Jesse, the life coach. So today is all about restoring balance. So I recently did a video on self-love. If you haven't checked it out, I'm gonna link it above so you can check it out. Um, but one thing that I did talk about in that video is about over giving, right? And the giver and taker dynamic. And it must have resonated with a lot of people because I got a few messages on it. And one big huge takeaway I got from it was I know I'm in dynamics that the give and take balance is off, right? Um, I'm overgiving, I give too much, I feel like I'm taken advantage of, I feel depleted. A big question was how do I restore that balance? Like, like how do I get my power back if I can't control certain people and they already know what the issue is and I can't get them to do what I want them to do? First things first is we always have to remember we can never control people, but what we can control is ourselves. And when we have control over ourselves, we actually can control outcomes. And today in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do that. So today I'm gonna to be sharing a guide on how to get your power back and restore the balance within your life. Okay, so number one is going to be all about communication. A lot of people think that they communicate properly and what they are doing in essence is communicating through passive aggressive means. A lot of people are gonna be able to relate to this. So what they do is they actually don't communicate with their words, but they communicate with their actions. They think by showing disapproval that you're actually communicating your needs to another. And that, of course, is false. And I'm gonna tell you why, right? So somebody does something to us, we give them silent treatments. We make it difficult, right? We start being, we start being difficult, right? We start treating them not the best. We start getting angry. We start throwing tantrums, so on and so forth. Passive aggressive means. Why is it passive aggressive? Because we haven't communicated with our words that we are not happy or what the problem is. We always make the assumption, and it's always assumptions that people understand our emotions, our feelings, our wants, our needs, and what the issue is. Nope. If you have not communicated to a person by your words, you are not communicating effectively. So you have to be an effective communicator if you want to restore the balance in a give and take dynamic. In order to take your power back, that's exactly what you have to do. You have to stand in your power. You can't make assumptions that people understand what we are feeling and what we are upset about if we haven't communicated that to them. You have to understand that people are not mind readers and people are only going to understand from their perspective. So you have to bring them in to your perspective on what is going on inside of you, what is going on with you, why you are unhappy, why you feel there is an imbalance. You have to be able to communicate that. So in essence, you have to find your voice. We oftentimes take our own perception and project it out. The way we treat people is not going to be the same as other people. Things that we find unacceptable or is too much or is depleting, it might not be the same in another, no matter how long you've been around them, no matter how long you've been with them, no matter if they're family members, no matter if you believe it's the right way to live your life, they do not know that. So you have to be clear in communication. So you have to let go of perceptions, expectations, and you have to be able to communicate clearly A lot of people do this. They have a problem with their spouse, they communicate it to their mother. They have a problem with the person they're with, they communicate it to a friend. You have a problem with a, a coworker, you complain to another coworker. You have a problem with your boss, you talk about them to other people. You have to go to the source. How is that fixing the problem? The only thing that you are creating is more drama and you're being avoidant. So I'm gonna hit you with truths, cause that's what we do here, we hit truths. We gotta get to the root of the problem. And this part is all about you. 
If you're not communicating properly, you are part of the problem. And what we want to do is be part of the solution. We have to look at ourselves first. A lot of people, when they're not getting what they want, they look at the other person. We project it out, not seeing the role that we are playing. This is your role in this. Yes, people might be taking advantage or you feel they're taking advantage of, but have you communicated that properly to them? Or have you been avoidant and you actually haven't addressed the source directly? Always, always go to the source and be clear on what the issue is. This is all about taking our power back. And in order for you to stand in your power, you have to be responsible for you and come in and speak very assertively. And that brings me into my next point. You have to be assertive. You have to be assertive with your needs and your wants. You have to be able to communicate that in an assertive way, not an aggressive way and assertive. Assertiveness is all about standing in your power. Assertiveness is all about standing within your needs, your wants, not letting others take advantage of you. Assertiveness is all about standing up for yourself and expressing clearly your needs and your wants. A lot of people that get into this um, uneven balance is because they take on more and more and more and more and they never communicate their needs and wants. Once again, they think the other person is just going to know. They feel that the other person should just understand their needs and wants. But if you haven't been assertive with this is what I want, then how can they possibly know? Remember, people are not mind readers, no matter how much you believe that you are right and this is the way it should be, you still have to be able to communicate that in an assertive way. You have to be able to stand your ground and tell people, this is my boundary. This is what I desire and this is what I want. And you have to be very, very clear. Do not leave room for gray boxes. Do not leave room for misunderstandings. Do not leave room for misinterpretations. Be very, very clear. My third tip on restoring your power is explain to people the benefits. This is gonna be an asset for you. The reason why is because we are human beings and we operate on what is in it for me. Unfortunately, it's sad, but it's true. So you wanted to, you wanna be able to explain that the new communication, the new you, the new person that's standing up within their ground, within their power, who's being assertive, is not only going to benefit you, it's gonna benefit us. You wanna make sure that you are making that clear. This is not all about me, this is about us. And I am actually gonna lay out what the benefits are going to be. Not all about one person. We are restoring the balance, which means it has to be balanced in the middle. It can be like this and it cannot be like that. It cannot be only to your advantage and not only to the other side. It has to be balanced. So explaining the benefits is gonna go a long way with getting what you want and need. It's almost like a tactic of manipulation, but not manipulating in the bad way, manipulating in the good way weight right because you're using that as leverage to get what you want for them for their actions to actually balance out and for them to want to make the changes that you are seeking you have to let people know where you stand if things do not change if the power and the balance is not restored to where it needs to be and the situation stays one-sided what is going to happen right so let's say you want your spouse to help you with cooking dinner or helping with the kids or household chores. You wanna make sure that after you explain the benefits, how that's gonna benefit your household and how they're gonna have a more present partner and how you're gonna be more relaxed and more willing to do certain things with them or for them, right? You also wanna make sure that you start explaining what that consequence is going to be if the dynamic continues to be one-sided and that's whatever that consequence is going to be for you right everybody's situation is going to be different but you want to make sure that you are expressing that and you're making the person aware so if they do not follow through with what you need you have to be actually ready to take the next step so before we get to the next step the next tip I'm gonna give you is that you have to be able to release control now, this is going to be a big one with the communication and getting to where you want when you want to restore balance in an un un unbalanced situation. 
you have to be able to release control. A lot of times the reason why you are in an unbalanced situation is because you are taking control of everything. Majority of the time you are over giving and that's something you are doing to yourself. No one's telling you to over give. No one's telling you to do certain things, but you are taking it on. So you have to be able to release. I'm going to give you an example. We're going to talk about motherhood, right? So if you're a parent and cause I hear this one all the time and you feel like your kids are not helping is because you are still doing for them way past the expiration date. So you might have toddlers that you did everything for, and then you have small children that you did everything for, and it's always been that way. And then they become teenagers, or they're getting to that point that they become teenagers, and you feel that they haven't taken responsibility like they should have, or you feel that they should have, right? But now, a big part of this that people are missing is that you have allowed it. You have not shown them how to take responsibility, right? You have not given them chores. You have not made sure that they're following through. You, not, you have not given them consequences or you do give them consequences, but then you backpedal and then you let it slide. One of the main reasons that usually happens is because a parent does not know how to let go of parenting so strongly. You know, they don't know how to let go of being that nurturer. Oh, that's my baby. Oh, I'll do it for him or I'll do it for her. Oh, she don't know how to do it. Let me do it for her. Yeah, they know how to do it. They know how to do it. If your kid knows how to get on TikTok and your kid knows how to get on Facebook and your kid knows how to get on Instagram, trust me, they can help you at home with a helping hand. Give them the responsibility, stick to it, and implement changes. You have to be able to release that control of saying, you know what, this is what you have to do, and if you don't follow through, there's gonna be a consequence, and if you don't do it, then no one's going to do it. You have to be able to release that control. You gotta be able to be honest with yourself and see how you're contributing to these dynamics and how you got yourself in them. And then what you want to do is release control. You have to gotta be able to release and be okay with that. If they don't follow through, you won't follow through. Like you can't pick up the slack. You have to say, okay, like if they don't clean this house, this house is gonna stay unclean. If they do not do the dishes, the dishes are gonna remain unclean until they do what they're supposed to be doing. If they don't do their laundry, they are going to go to school with dirty clothes. You have to be able to write it out and a lot of people fold. So you gotta be strong here. And of course, I'm just using that one dynamic. You gotta apply it to how it fits your life. If it's at work and you feel like it's an uneven balance at work and you have a coworker that's always leaning on you because you're always picking up the slack and you're like, well, if I don't do the work, it's not gonna get done. You know what? Do not pick up the slack. Let it not get done. Let it just fall apart. And in a situation like that, I will always advise kind of just keeping a trail of work that you have done. You want to be able to prove that you actually are doing more than you are set out to do, right? And my last tip is after you stand your ground, you have to be able to follow through with the consequence. Like if you're telling the job, like if this doesn't change, then I'm going to walk out that door. You better be able, you better be ready to walk out that door. And this is where a lot of this falls short and then you wind up in a cycle. The three hardest things to do on the tips that I just gave you is one, release control. Nobody wants to release control. And then they're upset of why it's always me because you keep on taking on the responsibility. You are allowing people to take advantage of you. You are allowing, you are allowing to keep on picking up the slack. You have to be able to say, whoo, I'm letting it go and let the chips fall where they may. You have to be able to do that. Number two, you have to be able to stand your ground. Stand your ground. Be able to go toe to toe with the person you are communicating with. Stand in your power. And the third one is do not back down and follow up with the consequence that you set forth. And a lot of people do not do that. And what happens is they wind up in a cycle and they wind up in chaos and they wind up in drama and they wind up depleted and they wind up like oh my god I can't take this anymore well guess what you have allowed it guess what you have continued to do the same thing over and over and over and the definition of insanity is just that doing the same thing and expecting a different result you have to change it up. You have to be able to level up. You have to be able to change the skin that you are in. You have to be able to be assertive. You have to be able to find your voice and you have to be able to stand up for yourself and do not, do not 
back down if you truly want power restored and you want to give and take situation and i mean this in every single situation like if you have a partner and the person is taking you for granted and you keep telling them this is what's going to happen this is what i'm going to do if it doesn't change i'm going to leave you have to be prepared to be able to walk out that door and stand firm in your decision do not go back and forth back and forth that's how people wind up in cycles like once you are done you have to be able to be done same thing with your kids if you're being taken advantage of by your kids you have to be able to say if you don't do don't do this this is going to be the consequence and if you don't do it you're going to school with dirty clothes you have a spouse that you've been asking for help and it's just like falling on deaf ears and you set the consequence follow through follow through with the consequence so they know that you are serious so they know that you are not someone to keep toying with you have to be able to stand in your power and guys those are my tips on how to restore the power back in dynamics that are completely and utterly uneven and you feel completely and utterly depleted you gotta recognize where you stand in these situations how you have contributed to it because we all play a part in a two or three or four party dynamic Sometimes we don't realize it because it's out of patterns, it's out of habits, it's out of the way we always been taught how to do things. So you have to be able to look at that and say, what do I need to change about me? All of these scenarios are pretty much about you. If you think about it, you are learning how to communicate better. You are learning how to be assertive. So you are learning how to stand in your power a little bit more. You are learning how to set standards and boundaries and cross the line and say, this is what's going to happen if this does not happen. You are learning how to stand in your power by um, being able to walk away, right? Maybe something that you have never done before. So you have to be able to switch it up. Do something different if you want a different result. You have to be able to do that. So guys, those are my tips on how to take back your power, find your voice, and start getting balance within your life. And I will see you in my next one. Bye.